Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Tom Patterson, Employer Brand Specialist at Checkout.com, and I'm going to talk to you today about how we have revolutionized our approach to wellness to really help our people in a time of need. So in case you haven't heard of us, uh, Checkout.com, we're one of the UK's fastest growing fintechs, and we help businesses all around the world with their connected finance through our payment processing platform. And this year, we have launched a wellness program within the business for the very first time, aptly called wellness at checkout.com. So um, today, I'm going to be taking you through the journey to how we got to launching this program, some key learnings and challenges that we encountered along the way, impact both internally and externally from an employer brand point of view, and there'll be plenty of time in the end um, for a Q&A as well. And I'd love to hear from any individual out there who might have some experience um, launching wellness initiatives or a program within their organization. You probably have some lessons that you could, um, you could teach us as well. So starting with wellness, well, you've probably seen this word around quite a lot, especially over the last couple of years, because it certainly is having a moment of cultural cool, whether it was on a tea you might have been drinking or as part of a fitness program you enrolled in, or in a lifestyle magazine, wellness is everywhere. But the definition that we really like and kind of acted as our compass really in trying to launch the initiative internally is this one. So when I uh, talk about wellness during this, this, this um, presentation, I'm referring to the state of being in good health, especially as an actively pursued goal. So why was 2020 the year that we refocused on wellness? Well, like probably every other business on the planet, we have been impacted and our people have been impacted by the pandemic brought on by COVID-19. So as of Friday, the 13th of March, we went into an extended period of working from home, which meant a new way of working for 95% of our global business. So 13 offices across the world, across five continents, all moving into a remote setting. Pair this with increased stress, anxiety, and uncertainty brought on by the pandemic meant that there was a real urgent need to support our people um, from, the, from the people function within the business. Thinking about wellness before COVID, we were okay. So in our last employee engagement survey, 68% of our people back in 2019 agree or strongly agreed that we uh, are committed to supporting their mental and physical well-being. As I said, that is okay, but with the um, state of affairs as it was, we really needed to, to do better to, to support our people. You know, you can see there a few people um, identified initiatives that we had in place, but they were wanting more. So we created a digital wellness hub um, from March that could be easily accessed anytime, anywhere. Digital was definitely the way to go, thinking about how we can um, cater for every single person that is within the business now working remotely, it really made sense to make sure that our wellness home was within a digital setting. And as Slack is our primary um, tool for communication across the globe, we launched the wellness um, channel, wellness at checkout.com on Slack. So that became the home for our efforts. And the mission statement that we created alongside with uh, our channel was to support our people in making sure they stay on top of their mental, physical and nutritional health as we navigated our new way of working and to give them top tips and advice to help us stay fit, healthy and productive during COVID-19 and beyond without the newsfeed updates. Because in March, and it still is the case now, turn on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, the news, COVID, you know, news, real news, fake news, it's all there. So we wanted this to be a bit of a, a haven from, from all of that. So obviously a wellness program doesn't just create itself. We had an amazing and still do have an amazing project team behind our efforts. We called the project team Project Unite after one of our core key values as a business. And it consisted of 13 uh, volunteers from within the people function. So they took it upon themselves to come up with the program, launch the program and um, take responsibility for its upkeep. We really wanted to make sure that we were catering for the needs of our people. So rather than making assumptions, we started the process by launching a questionnaire, which remained live across all of our wellness efforts in which people could contribute topic ideas, recommendations, feedback. So we were constantly getting that um, engagement from our people and really trying to understand what they wanted the program to look like. And we really had to act fast and learn as we go because there really was no time to wait on this one. So we launched our program with what we coined 10 weeks of wellness. So for 10 weeks, every single week, 
we focused on a different wellness theme and brought members of the community a wide range of activities, bespoke content, live sessions, expert Q and A's, a real range. Um, and we kind of made a pledge to give our members at least one wellness update every single working day. Um, and we managed to stick to that across the 10 weeks. So here at a glance are our themes. These came from a brainstorm within the function, looking at the questions from our survey, and also just thinking holistically, we really wanted to tackle wellness from as many different angles as possible. So physically, mentally, we've got areas on nutrition there as well, sleep. So we would cater for something for everybody basically. And 10 weeks really gave us enough breathing room to do that. So rather than me telling you what the um, 10 weeks kind of consisted of, I thought I would show you. Hopefully tech allowing, you will now watch a video with perfect sound and visual. It is only two minutes long. So if there are any problems, um, you know, it's only two minutes long, but, but fingers crossed this works. So this is a bit of a montage of some of the best bits from our live events as part of our 10 weeks of wellness. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for all joining us and welcome to our first uh, wellness live event. To give you a little bit of context, this week we launched our CKO Wellness Channel, uh, a new home for carefully created top tips and advice to help us stay fit, healthy and productive. Those of you who have to get into the creative writing, I know you have got the balance that will say you know, writing songs. The start, I really start encouraging you all to start doing some creative writing the first thing when you wake up. Uh, well, for you, it's rather different to the sort of asana-based, uh, uh, posture-based yoga that we do. Just remember, because I can't see you, so do be careful to do what you can do, not to overdo it. Our active session as always, so please feel free to um, use the chat box um, and grab a pen and a paper as well, as there will be some um, activities and um, workshops that are going on throughout the course. So, over to you, Josie. Hi guys, JJ here. I'm going to take you through 10 simple exercises you can do anywhere that focus on the seven functional movements that we do every single day. This week on the Wellness Channel, we focused on the theme of mental health. With that in mind, please don't forget about your holiday allowance for this year. So that was just uh, some examples of those amazing events and hopefully you got a feel there. We tried to make them as interactive as possible. So there was always a live chat function, sometimes just face-to-face -face talking as well um, on those events. And the events team at checkout.com did an incredible job because sometimes we'd only decide on next week's theme the, the Friday of the week before and they would have a few days to, to pull together um, you know, a fantastic events program. We had some amazing experts from all around the world um, speaking across those 10 weeks. So yeah, it was a real pleasure. And to go alongside those events, as I said, we created a really wide range of content. Um, so lots of this came from the core project team. We crowdsourced throughout the business and we really relied on the amazing design function that we have within the business to elevate the content we were creating and make it appear as engaging as possible on that Slack channel. You know, something that you would want to click on and read. So some highlights here on the left, that's um, a notice reminding people of our employee assistance program during mental health week. In the middle for creativity week, we um, approached our resident DJs to get their top tips of tunes they were listening to to in lockdown and created a work from home playlist off the back of that. On the right, you can see a photo challenge. We did a weekly photo challenge and these were shots from people um, showing how they were unwinding at the end of the day um, during our self care week. On the left, you saw a snippet in that clip, but we had a, a couple of positivity Zoom sessions with our CEO where the only rule was we couldn't talk about anything work related. Tiger King was, um, was, was really big during those sessions. So I think probably 80% of the conversation um, centre around that, but some really, really awesome, awesome chats. You can see some artwork from the children of checkout.com in the middle, again, for Creativity Week. 
And for Nutrition Week, we launched a global cookbook. So we asked for recipes from across all of our global locations and created a really yummy and delicious cookbook off the back of it. So kind of at a glance, what we've managed to achieve so far with the wellness work, all of that equated to 125 pieces of curated content across 10 weeks and 20 virtual uh, and live events that were streaming and are now available on demand. So I guess it's worth saying that everything that was part of that 10 weeks of wellness still lives on our Slack channel. Um, and the team have done a fantastic job creating a bit of a one pager on our confluence. If you're not familiar with confidence, it's like Wikipedia for, um, for businesses. So that's a kind of real one stop shop for people to just go back to and, and revisit all this content. For new joiners as well, who weren't necessarily with us for those 10 weeks of wellness, again, they have all of those resources now available on demand. I've already talked a little bit about this, but we really wanted to think holistically when um, devising our program and trying to cater for as many different learning styles as possible. So when we would meet as a project team, we would think, okay, we've got something for visual learners, something for the auditory learners. Have we got something that is gonna cater to, to all the different individuals we have within the business? And we really wanted to make this a start of something rather than just a flash in the pan. We wanted to make a pledge for long-term change, which we have managed to do as a result, which is fantastic. So we have pledged to the business that the wellness program will be continuing indefinitely um, you know, beyond COVID. So time for a quick poll. Natasha, if you wouldn't mind, I'm sure seamlessly um, putting the questions onto the screen. But uh, these questions come directly from our um, from our 10 weeks of wellness. So for um, Nutrition Week, like I said, we launched a global cookbook. Which country do you think submitted the most recipes for that cookbook? Who loves their food the most? For our Fitness Week, we launched a global challenge to get people to send short videos of them doing their favorite at-home exercises and then challenge others in the business to do the same. Which exercise uh, do you think appeared most often? Um, in our montage, which you saw um, a few minutes ago. And finally, in our self-confidence week, we asked for top tips from people within the business as to how they support their self-confidence and which tip do you think was uh, given most frequently? Maybe I'll give you an 30 update. seconds. Yeah, maybe 30 seconds or so, because there's a few questions on there. No, no rush at all. I think I know what my favourite exercise would be during the, uh, the fitness challenge. I'm not sure how that got in there though. <laughs> that actually, well, all, all of those were submitted um, at least once. So yeah, Amazing. people have some fun with that challenge. <laughs> Give it another 20 seconds or so. Sure, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to end the polling and then I'll share the results with you. So hopefully you can all see them now. Amazing. Okay, so which country submitted the most recipes for our global cookbook? You all think it was Singapore. Interestingly, it was actually Dubai, the, the least. We've got some real foodies in there. They, they actually submitted far beyond Singapore and France. So that's an interesting one. I'm not sure if it speaks about the country or the individuals in the team, but um, it was Dubai. What was the people's favourite exercise during our fitness challenge? Drinking a glass of wine did feature in the video, but um, getting dressed upside down was the most frequent exercise that people did. I think it might have been a TikTok challenge that kind of um, made its way into our video as well. And finally, um, what was our top tip for self-confidence? I don't know if I can see. Oh, can you not? No, can you? Uh, yeah, sorry. The um, top tip for self-confidence, um, the top two were joint at 43%. So allow yourself to be imperfect and acknowledge failure and listen to your favourite song to feel strong and powerful. And the last one okay. was in at 13%. So always try to be learning, growing and adapting. Amazing. Okay, great. Well, those were all tips that people suggested, but the one that came through most frequently was allow yourself to be imperfect. So well done to those that, that got that correctly. Amazing, there you go. Awesome. Um, so moving on to some of our biggest challenges. So disseminating wellness across the world. Like I said, we have 13 global offices across five continents. So obviously that poses a bit of a logistical challenge, thinking about 
when is best to post content in the day, when is it best to uh, host live events to try and catch as many different time zones as possible. Things like Dubai, they don't work Monday to Friday, they work um, Sunday to Thursday, so making sure that we don't post anything crucial out on a Friday because they'll miss it. Um, and also there are cultural differences as well, you know, what is a real hot topic in the UK might not necessarily be the same in Mauritius. So it was really crucial, as I've said a few times, just keeping those lines of communication open, asking people in those offices whether this would be something that resonates with their, with their team. Balancing our efforts with business needs was another challenge. So just being aware of internal deadlines, trying to make sure that we weren't clogging up people's days with too many activities that took away from um, their working day, having conversations with managers as well to make sure that their teams felt like they could engage in the wellness work um, freely without judgment was, was something that we continue to try and work through um, during the 10 weeks. And also keeping momentum going, you know, it was quite a big pledge. And as I said, the amazing project team were all doing it on a voluntary basis alongside all of the rest of their normal day to day work, which certainly wasn't slowing down. So we had to hold ourselves accountable um, to each other, I guess, and to the business to the promise that we'd made. Um, and I'm very proud to say that, you know, we had a fantastic time as a team and I think did a, did a really, really great job. So has the program been a success so far? Um, I'd like to say it has. We did a questionnaire at the end of our 10 weeks and 80% of the people that filled in that questionnaire have been more health conscious and active as a result of the tips and guidance that we have given. And 90% feel that checkout supports their well-being. So if you remember back to that 68% stat that I shared, a huge jump in just the space of 10 weeks. So we were, we were absolutely delighted with that. Um, and some really nice comments from people as well saying that we've helped them keep sane and healthy during this time measuring engagement so we did a variety of different um, methods to make sure that we were keeping in tune and, and to make sure that we we're actually having an impact on the business so things like looking at comments looking at the volume of reactions on slack having conversations with people and um, and also just keep an eye an eye on views during our events as well so for example kind of five weeks five weeks through our 10 weeks we saw um, attendance drop in our events and we did some digging and found out it was because people were finding um, that they were slightly overwhelmed with the volume of events that we were hosting. So we scaled that back slightly for the second half of those 10 weeks and we saw engagement go up again. So just little tweaks like that, thinking smartly about the, um, the feedback we were getting. And we had some really nice engagement from an external perspective as well. So although the program was designed and is designed for internal use only and, and for our people, um, we could do some really smart um, sort of elevation with the types of content that we were creating. So um, for example, we had an amazing talk with athletes, um, Olympic athletes, Sam Oldham. Uh, that was a you know, live Q&A with our head of people, but we converted that into a written piece of content that we then published on our blog. So people outside of checkout could engage and, add value and see value um, in the conversation that we had with Sam. So just thinking of smart ways to actually add value to people that were looking at the content we were putting out there for our wellness work um, was kind of our approach rather than just saying we've launched this this initiative you know there you are our five biggest learnings so i've probably covered quite a few of these already during the session but i can't say you know um, hard, hard enough that creating that open dialogue was so vital to helping us make content that resonated we can't make assumptions about people's needs, especially when it comes to things like wellness. So just continuing to get feedback from wherever possible, as frequently as possible, was, was, was um, crucial. We had real success as well using internal, what we call internal influences. So every week when we were you know, brainstorming ideas for our next session, we asked ourselves, who do we know in the business who is a real fanatic in sport or who has a fantastic creative flair? We would then approach those individuals and create content or events in collaboration with them and then encourage them to be the ones to actually publish that content um, in the channel. So that caused some really nice pockets of engagement across the business with individuals and groups that perhaps wouldn't necessarily have engaged um, without kind of us reaching out. Have fun and don't be afraid to experiment. So we had to act fast. You know, it was only three days after we started working from home that we created Project Unite. And then five days in, we launched the program. So we didn't really have a choice in this, this instance, but acting fast, getting that feedback and, and tweaking as a response was a really you know, fantastic way to work for us in this instance. 
make sure that core team members have roles. So it's great to have this team, but if people aren't necessarily, you know, sure of their sphere of ownership, they can flail or things can get dropped. But I think we did a really good job from the very beginning, making sure that every week everyone knew the pieces of content or the, the pieces of um, um, the program in the week ahead, what fell on them. And like I said, we held each other accountable to making sure that that always um, saw the light and always thinking about the future as well. So yes, this was a short term initiative in the sense that we had those 10 weeks of wellness, but we were from the very beginning, we wanted this to feel like the start of something new rather than a flash in the pan. So having that kind of um, open dialogue and, and transparency about the future was, was really crucial in our, in our um, efforts. Thinking about the future, as I said, we sent that questionnaire out at the end of our 10 weeks of wellness. And in that we asked for people's you know, what, what do they want basically from the future of the program? So here's some examples of things that we are putting in place as a result of that feedback. So for example, stress and anxiety, people found the most helpful topics during those 10 weeks. So we'll be sure to include more events and content and um, focused on that in the future. Themes that we didn't have time to hit, but people would really love to see like color therapy, specific breathing sessions we're going to implement in the future. And 95% of people said they wanted to see events on a bi-weekly basis. So that's how we're going to be structuring things moving forward. So that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour of wellness at checkout.com so far. 